Hello students. Now in the part 2, we will start with the new chapter, the fall of Troy. Now students, this chapter 2.4 is a chapter which is based in Greece. It is a story of Greek mythology. How we have in our country, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the epics, like that in the Greek European literature, the Iliad and the Odyssey were the epics. Yes. And let us learn more about this lesson. The fall of Troy. Troy is the name of a city. Fall means what? The defeat. So what is the uh, meaning of the title? The defeat of Troy. Okay. Now going to the lesson. Part 1. Epics are long poems that relate the deeds of a great national hero. Or a great national war. So what are epics? They are the stories of long poems or deeds of great national hero. Like for example Ramayana is the story of whom? Ram, Lakshman, yes Bharat and Shatrughna. And the Mahabharat is the story of the Pandavas and the Kauravas like that only. These are known as the epics. They often tell us a story of a na nation's early history. They may be composed and sung or recited. They, this is written as a composition. It can be sung also. It can be recited also for many years before they are actually written down. So many of these epics were not written down in the beginning. They were sung and orally they were handed down from one generation to another generation till finally they were written down the two famous sanskrit epics are the ramayana and the mahabharata and the two great epics of european literature yes in europe written in ancient greek greek is the name of a language of greece are the iliad and the odyssey just as in Indian literature, we go back to the stories of the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. So, in the literature of Western countries, they go back to the Iliad and the Odyssey. So, these are the epics which were written in the ancient time. And like the Ramayana and Mahabharata, they were not written at once. They were handed down first orally and later on, they were written. Okay. Now, just as children all over India know the names of stories of Ram and Sita, Yudhishthira and Arjuna and Draupadi, so children in western countries know the names of Hector and Odysseus and Achilles and Helen of Troy. The most beautiful woman in the world. So who was Helen of Troy? She was the most beautiful woman in the world. Because whom the Greek, because of whom the Greek and the Trojans fought for 10 long years. Yes, the Greeks and the Trojans. Now, Trojans were the ancient people, ancient people of Trode. Yes, in uh, the uh, around Greece only. You know, Greece is also a group of islands. Yes, there are many islands there, like uh, the uh, Sparta is there, Athens is there and all that. Okay, now nobody knows for certain who the author of these early epics were. Now nobody knows who the author, writer of these epics were. It is thought that they arose and developed with the nation itself. So they were kept on repeating and repeating and thus it became a story, an epic and were handed down from singer to singer. Yes, the singers is to sing it and then others who is to learn it is to repeat it and from one generation to another generation it was handed down till perhaps one great poet gave them a final form. Gave them a final form means at last it was like written. It is believed that the Iliad and the Odyssey was composed and recited by a blind poet named Hector. Now it was composed, it was made 
yes it was prepared by a blind poet named hector who lived about 900 bce bce means before christ era and who wandered from one greek city or village to another so he wandered wandered means roamed from one place to another from one greek city to another or one village to another village singing his poems and what would he do he would sing his poems to all who would receive him in their homes and give him hospitality so you know that time there were no televisions no radios so they used to entertain people used to entertain such singers they used to welcome these singers in their homes and for days together that singer is to sing and repeat and tell the stories and all that and people is to give him shelter and food yes and many people also is to from surrounding is to come and listen to him so what happened and that time no people had big big houses so it was possible okay this wandering singer has been honored through the ages but he was not like a beggar you can't tell a beggar but he was respected he was honored through the ages not only in greece but in all europe yes in full of europe he was respected as the father of european poetry the iliad is the story of ilium or troy so what was troy also known as ilium a rich trading city in Asia Minor near the narrow sea that leads from the Aegean to the Black Sea. Yes, this is the location of Troy. It was well situated both for commerce and agriculture. It was well placed. Situated means placed for commerce. Commerce means trade. Yes, you know trade has been going on right from olden days for trade also and for agriculture also. In front of the city was the sea over which sailed the ships of Troy. Yes, front of the city of Troy there was a big sea and ships from there used to go and come, trade is to go on, yes, of goods, ships from other countries is to come. Ships from Troy used to sail to other countries and carrying goods and grain, carrying a variety of things and grain. At the back rose the high peak of Mount Ida. Yes, at the back, front there was the sea, at the back what was there? High mountain peaks of Mount Ida from which flowed many rivers and streams. Now students, from the mountain there were rivers and streams so lot plenty of fresh water yes and when rivers and stream flow from the mountain you might have learnt in geography they bring a lot of deposits silt mud lot of humus and this makes the land very fertile from which flowed many rivers and streams the valleys among the hills were well watered and the valleys, the place between the hills where villages were there, they were well watered. The valleys were well watered and fertile. Fertile means lot of crops could grow. Yes, it was very fertile, very rich. With corn growing in fertile fields and cattle feeding on the rich grass. Rich grass means the green grass. Yes, so lot of prosperity. The city was very rich for trading also and for agriculture. Trading because of the sea where trading could go on and agriculture because of the uh, fertile land, the mountains, the, the rivers and streams that brought water. Water is very important for agriculture and over that the fertility also was increased by the deposits brought by the rivers. And lot of cattle could be fed with the rich grass yes you know our agricultural waste also is used for fodder grass of the meadows meadows means grasslands while sheep fed on the slopes of the hill so there was plenty of also animals yes animals means which were useful 
okay so it was rich in trading rich in agriculture and rich in animal husbandry also okay now we'll continue in part 3